Hey, it's Mike with the Daily BM. On this episode of Flick Friday, we start to talk about the movie Upgrade. But then, of course, we deviate and start talking about books and all sorts of other topics. It's a great listen. I think there's a couple words of wisdom in there, mostly from Brad. But, you know, it is what it is. Enjoy this episode. Remember to like and subscribe. And five-star reviews is what we're looking for. I don't think we got any yet, which means we're probably sucking, but it's okay. It's okay, guys. We know We know you love us at heart. Have a good one. And remember, Brad's always farting in the background. (laughs) Hey, good morning, fuckers, and welcome to The Real Friday. That's right, we're talking movies today, and I have the most awesome partner in crime, Mikey in the house, and who's not eating food for the first time on a Friday. Oh, Oh, man. Hold on, let me grab some food. Let me grab some food real quick. All right, get me something too, man. I'm Incident. sorry. I, I wouldn't. Gra- I won't grab grab food right now. I'm, I'm going to try not to annoy Eddie and the other <laughs> listeners that don't like hearing me chew. Hey, how long yeah. would? How far can your drone fly before it loses communication? I think like two miles. Oh, lame. Fucking a man. What? Come on. I, 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 doubt, say- I doubt. I doubt it'll get that far, but. I was going to say, because I'm only, what, maybe seven, eight miles away? Oh, try to fly you something? Yeah, that's highly illegal. <laughs> Have you fly, can you imagine you fly, drop a bag of chips at my door, fly back to your house? Yeah. I'd be like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> so, so at the beginning of the show, you guys today will not understand what happens. So you'll have to listen Monday to understand the joke at the beginning of this episode. So listen Monday, and you'll totally understand the joke from the beginning of this episode. Correct. But anyways, before we go on a wild tangent, tangent. <laughs> let's and talk about Tuesday show. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about what we came to talk about, and that's movies. Uh, I've got two movies on the docket. The first one is Upgrade. It's actually an older movie from 2018. So yeah, it's six years old. I'm just now getting around to see it. It <laughs> popped up on my Netflix recommendations, and I know you've seen it. And I actually really liked the movie. I really liked Dude. it a lot. I'm telling you, man, I, it was a sleeper movie for me, man. I was the same yeah. way. I was like, you know what, man? I'm so tired of seeing the – because uh, let's be honest. Most Netflix shit and Prime stuff that's out there right now kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Um, uh, uh, some of it. I, some of it. I mean, there's – the, I don't know about you. Do you have to flip through that good. shit? Do you have to flip through that shit like to find something? I do, but I think that's less them and more me. I think it's a problem here. Okay, so <laughs> we'll, I'll, we'll stop segue for two seconds. Okay, here we go. Off to the right. Go. Back in the day, we would sit down and we'd have maybe like 20 channels to watch. Mm -hmm. So you ended up having to pick something because Mm -hmm. you're just like, I'm done. You know, now the choices are endless, virtually endless. And it's like you have to ask yourselves, like, what do I feel like? What am I looking for? You know, like, how do I want to end this day? And the problem is you've already exhausted your decision-making ability throughout the day because you only have a limited number of decisions that you can make effectively throughout the day right? before your brain just says, hey, I'm done. Like, it's nap time. So by the time you get to the movies at night, it's like, I got nothing left. So I will sit there and literally spend, I've done this numerous times, spend 30 minutes scrolling through. Oh, God, it's so brutal, isn't it? Trying to find something that's going to fit my need to watch. And I just go, fuck it, I'm going to bed. (laughs) Because I only had like 30 minutes before I lights out anyways. So it's like I've exhausted the time. It's like, oh, shit. So that's why I really like when I find like a series. Um, And we could talk about that, too, because that falls in the movies. Like lately, I've been watching the Alone uh, series on History Channel. Oh, I love those things, man. Um, I like them because they're, ep- they're episodes and they last about an hour. So you can watch. I mean, you got to be careful not to get caught in the binge cycle. So my wife hates it because I'm like, all right, one episode and we're done. And then I turn the TV off. She's like, oh, come on. We got to see if he gets eaten by the cougar. I'm like, I'm guarantee you he's not getting eaten by the cougar. Yeah, yeah, I think they're yeah. not going to put that on TV, dude. <laughs> it's not showing up on the History Channel. You know, not at least until the whole family's dead <laughs> so nobody can sue. You know? <laughs> Can't believe he ate his fucking arm off, man. Yeah, Hell yeah. Shit, dude. <laughs> like, and we showed up the next day and Billy was dead. You know, like the end. <laughs> so anyway let's, okay. let's talk about that show because i do so, want to talk about alone because i think it's a great show but let's talk about the upgrade first yeah, so, and get that out of the way and come back to that 
Yeah, so I stumbled across Upgrade because it was just kind of – I think you actually said it was pretty good to check it out. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. And I watched it, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I really – and it's funny because it's like six years old. So it was before all this AI stuff really started taking right? off. I know. Hey, so, by the way, spoiler alert, guys. So we're going to talk about this. So if you haven't seen it, stay on the episode for a little bit longer. <laughs> we'll ruin your fucking day. <laughs> If not, yeah. just probably go ahead about by five minutes right now. Go five minutes ahead, and we should be done talking about it. Go. Yeah. So I just liked it because it had the premise that um, you know AI being incorporated, and it works into the you know the plot is basically there's um, a gentleman and his wife, and they get in an accident with an autonomous vehicle, and it's basically a robbery where people jack hijack the car and cause the car to crash. And they shoot the wife, kill her, and they, they disable him. He's now, he's now a quadriplegic. And through some high-tech secret technology, much like what Elon Musk is working on right now with his neural link system, yep. this man is able to regain the ability to use his arms and his legs. Now, the caveat is, is it's basically a computer AI that's been integrated into his brainstem. So his brain sends the main message to the computer AI. It processes it and then sends it to its other node that sends it out to all the muscles. And the computer um, basically talks to the guy. And he can talk to the computer and nobody else can hear. And nobody else can hear the computer talking. I mean, people can hear him because he's talking out loud. But the computer can take over his limbs and do things that the guy cannot do because he doesn't know it. Like martial arts and a whole bunch of other crazy shit. It's got faster perception times and things and all sorts of stuff because it, it it can see whatever he sees. It can feel whatever he feels. It's totally interactive. Um, and I'm not going to go – I'm not going to – I don't want to spoil it for people. I like people to watch it. But it is a very good twist on AI. Oh, yeah. It, it starts off – it starts off as a revenge movie, but there's a twist. And the twist is worth it. I would watch it for the just the <laughs> twist because I was like, ooh, that's clever. That's a yeah. clever twist. So I honestly thought it was great writing because yeah. we have had such poor writing as of late over the last year or so. In my opinion, that's just straightly an opinion of the things I, that I watch. I Even okay, so I, I want to cut you off real quick. I don't sure. think it's poor writing. I think it's the movie um, producers and the movie studios not having the balls to back unique scripts. They are looking for surefire one hundred percent wins which is sequels and you know remakes right now that seems to be the two things that that draw the highest revenue is sequels That's some and good remakes. points so i don't think it's a lack of quality writers out there writing i think cuz if you read books there's a lot of great stories out there and great content yeah but but are the books guys really the ones that write the movie scripts that's they're the inspiration i mean look at game of thrones it came from right. books you know, look at the Wheel of Time. That's a game. Of, that's that's a book. Um, upgrade is probably I, I would want it. I'd probably say uh, a book. Maybe let's let me Google. Yeah, so, but I guess I guess while you're googling that, yeah, yeah. I guess upgrade, what I'm trying to say it, it, is, yeah, yeah but it's yeah. a lot easier to take a good book, like a yeah. great book, and then write a, a script to it. But you still have to execute it on screen, and that's what I'm getting at. I'm like some of those scripts, the way they write it, even though the book was so good, they don't. I mean, I, let me let me back up. Most movies that are written from books don't turn out to be that well. The book is usually better anyway because of the writing well, ability and things of that nature, and the way they can lay it out in a book a lot more in detail. Yeah, get of more course. Descriptive. Yeah, of, well, of course, because th- there's two things that go into advantage. Number one, the creativity all happens in your mind with a book because you get to imagine what the characters look like, even if there's descriptors. You, your mind still tweaks them for your personal preferences. You know, yeah, that's true. Um, so in in the book, you have thousands of hours to like build characters, build stories, build plot lines, and that's not even going over you know multiple series. I mean, because what I mean by thousands of hours is like in a book, you can go over a month's worth of time in a chapter, you know, and you could detail out thirty days in in a book in a chapter. In a movie, you can't do that. It has to be time lapse because you've only got like a two to three hour window to tell everything. So you don't get the plot development. You don't get the, you know, you don't get a lot of the elements 
from the books. So the books are always, in most cases, always going to be better. I mean, I'm sure there's some exceptions. Um, one exception that comes to mind, I really like in like, and this is going to be kind of like gay sounding, but I know I can, can't say that, but <laughs> the movie Twilight Breaking Dawn part two, mm-hmm. the sequence at the end of that movie where it shows the battle scene was not in the book. Okay. In the book, it, in the book, it just says that the the two the two people that could see the future fought, foresaw what would happen, and they both right. realized that it was a no win scenario that it would decimate both sides of the camp, and right. they just realized it was better. In the movie, they played that shit out, and you could I went to go see it in the theater, and you could liter- literally hear everybody in the theater gasping as their favorite characters' heads are getting ripped off, and they're dying, and you're like, holy shit, did they actually just change the ending of this movie? And then you realize it was just a sequence of possibilities, but that was a really cool switch, you know, in my opinion, like it was a really cool way to bring the story to life, which I think was really a lot more vivid than what was put together in the book. Um, Cause in the book, it didn't describe the bat, like the battle scene, you know, like it didn't go down that, that path. It was just like, you know, they both were able to see like, because both, they had two people on their each team that could foresee the moves of the others. And then they all te- they all communicate telepathically, so they could the one person that can see what's happening can really quickly go, "Hey, watch, watch out! You're going to get attacked by this, this, and this." And then that gave them a superiority. So it was pretty, you know, that was that was a cool difference. Um, so I think that's part of the, the the advantage of having a book is you can you can really draw out your characters, and you can you can do a lot more with words than you can do with visuals. Hmm. Um, it's getting better because of CGI now. So, I mean, you have right. a lot more ability to do things. Um, Especially fight and, scenes and things like that from a distance on a zoom out type scale, yeah. you know, where you can't really tell that's not the actor or that because it's gotten so scary good, you know? Yeah. Or like Lord of the Rings. I mean, not Lord of the Rings, but um, uh, House of Dragons. Um, the dragon fighting sequences, you know, are freaking awesome. You know, seeing the dragons is amazing, and then you know the real the realism. Like you really feel like they're characters now, as opposed to like you know add ons like armatronics. You know, like you like right. you sometimes in the past you could tell like it was something from Chuck E. Cheese. You know what I mean? Like an animatronic, or it's like hello, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, you know damn well that wasn't real. Yeah. Where you know and with the new act- with CGI, it feels real. Yeah, and the actors have gotten so much better of acting with you know with the CGI that it's so much more believable. Believable, uh, and so it's so much better. Like um, it's sometimes hard to believe like that those aren't real. Like they're not real. Like physically in the room with the actors. Like as right, a, you know. Yeah, they're not like they're not on a set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like they're not on you know? set. It's like they're in a real environment. It feels very real. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, so. I think that's the disadvantage of books, but I mean, there's so much good content out there. So many good books that you could build that you could build movies off of. Um, I just think that the studios are scared to pull the trigger because, you know, you have, the thing is, is like, you have to make so much money for a movie to be profitable, even if it's a great movie, but it doesn't generate enough revenue. It doesn't get a sequel. Yeah. Cause it's a, it'd be considered a failure in their eyes because it's yeah. all revenue driven. Obviously it's the world we yeah. live in. But, you know, and then it brings back, you know, something that you said months ago when you were talking about you really were getting into foreign, you know, uh, directors and foreign writers and things like that and foreign driven yeah. shows and movies. And lot, uh, I like a lot of the Korean stuff. Um, right. Mostly because they're not trying to push an agenda as hard. Right. Like I feel now it's like a lot of the stuff that's coming out of, you know, Hollywood is just agenda driven and is trying to cram ideologies down my throat. Mm hmm. And it's not, it's not even if I agree or disagree with them. I just feel like it's too polarized. Like I'm going to the movies to escape reality, not have it slapped in my face continuously. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. or it's to like go watch history. You know, like if I'm watching a war movie, it's to watch like heroic acts. You know, and things of that nature. And now it's gotten to the point where everything is so politicized and trying to push an agenda that I just I don't like it as much. Well, it's kind of yeah. like what you know. It, it goes all the way back from even the movie, like The Patriot, how yep. inaccurate a lot of it was historically speaking. And some people were considering that to be historical, 
No, and I'm like, there's no. three different guys that that one. Yeah, and I'm going, of. dude, didn't it didn't even happen that way? Like they no. were like they were claiming it. This was all pure Hollywood. There yep. it wasn't, fa- you know, there were some things in Braveheart that weren't even factual. You know what I mean? Um, when you go and you do the research oh, on lot, it, there's a lot of stuff in Braveheart that wasn't factual. A right. lot of stuff that was in Braveheart that wasn't factual. I mean, it's yeah. not. That's the thing. It's it's a fictional movie, but the problem is, is that people start watching this stuff and they think that's how it is. You know, correct. They, they get in their mind of wow, you know, you know, uh, the, the, he was part of the uh, the, the uh, Revolutionary War. The way he did this and all that, you know, it was like they accused the English of shooting, um, you know, uh, killing civilians and everything. But the reality was, war is war. Number one, it's not. There's no fucking rules. I don't give a shit what anyone says. If you think if you think you can bend the rules and break some of the rules, you're gonna to try to win. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I mean, let's face it, the victor writes the freaking history. You know what I mean? Right. So if the, you know, and I hate to say it like this, but if like Germany had won World War II, they would have shown America to be the freaking bad people underneath the Nazi regime. You know what I mean? Because they would have been right. writing history from that point forward. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, well, it didn't really happen that way because I know my uh, ex father in law, he was the same way because he's English, and he was like, man, no, they were they were the ones shooting officers. You know, the English or the the American colonists. You know, because they were hard to fight because they were militiamen. Yeah. You know yep. what I mean? I mean, they didn't stand. They didn't stand in lines no. and and really try to shoot. They were fucking doing right. fucked up shit to try to win. They wanted their. They wanted liberty. They wanted to have freedom away from the English uh, king. So yeah. And what's funny is that like, you know, people don't really get history. They don't. They, they don't get to understand history. Like you know, you see so many people like today that, you know, they're like, oh, the Democrats are great. Democrats are great. I'm not knocking Democrats in any sense, but. It was the Democratic Party that was for slavery. They were Mm -hmm. against. They were against civil rights. They were against all of that. That's the reason they formed because Thomas Jefferson's, you know, party started being called the Republicans, and the Democrats rose up against Thomas Jefferson, and they were trying to get black civil rights. I mean, that was what led up to the Civil War, right? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's what I understand. You know, it kills me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like the narrative got changed somewhere along the way, you know, to villainize people um, because of movies and things of that nature, like pop culture, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. And what's scary today is it's like, you know, kids watch stuff on YouTube that's just coming from somebody that doesn't even have a degree, maybe may or may not have a degree or any type of backing or any type of information. And they believe them because – they're seeing it on YouTube and the guy might have a lot of following or whatever. And they take it as fact. And I'm constantly going, Hey, did you fact check that? Are you sure that's right? Or just not his opinion and speculation. And that's the scary thing. That's what we're getting into. It's like, you know, now we're, I mean, we're segueing off against movies. Again, I know, so. but, I, but my thing is, I'll just say this and then we'll, I want to jump into a loan real quick before we get out of here. Yeah. But my thing is, it's like one thing of being around you have noticed is that, you better have your fact checks in space. And if you don't, you'd better own it that I didn't fact check that. Cause I know you, I know how you think as an individual. And I think if more people thought that way around everybody, Hey, I haven't fact checked this, but this is what I've seen, yeah. but I need to fact check it. I've done that actually in one of my, um, um, my, one of my calls with the IC I'm like, Hey, I saw this, but I haven't fact checked it. So I don't know yeah. how much of this is accurate. So maybe we could, you know, maybe we could all fact check this to make sure this is accurate. You know? I'm not doing it to be right. I'm doing it in the name. You want to be factual of of correct of, of, of being of being factual. You right. know, it's like it has nothing to do with like being right or wrong. Because I'll be the first person to admit when I'm wrong, and because I, I want to know when I'm wrong. Like if I get yes. bad information, I want it fixed. Well, you're wrong. You know? Just yeah, kidding. Okay, then tell me why and show me the facts. You know, like, there just you go. think you're wrong. I just think you're wrong. <laughs> Which is no, fine too, because people right. no. people are entitled to their own opinions. That's what makes this country great. Is everybody right. is entitled to their opinions and their freedoms? You know, to practice what they want to practice and do what they want to do, as long as it's not infringing on other people's people's rights. Rights. You know, like if what you want to do is not hurting someone else, then it's fine. In my yep. opinion, like you should be able to have that, you should have that liberty to be able to do it. Um, and then as a society, we need to come together in the middle and say, okay, this is the middle road. Like this, you know, this is acceptable by law for everybody. This is on the out fringe. This is in the out fringe. Cause there's things that are wishy-washy and there's things we'll never agree on, you know? 
I mean, the no, bottom line, there's things that people never agree on. It's about finding a happy compromise that that feels like a win win for both parties. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, and I think it's really challenging because I feel like it's at what point, you know, do you break down and create separate societies based on your beliefs? Because, you know, that's I feel like we're heading right now. I feel like we're heading to a point where it's like everybody that feels this way is going to go to this side of the country and everybody that feels this way is going to go to this side of the country and that's going to be the end of it. <laughs> well, we've said this on, on, you know, what we'll do is we'll hold that other show alone for another topic because I do want to talk about like – the hunting and all that other kind yeah. of stuff. So I think it, that's going to take longer than three or four minutes to talk about. Um, yes. But I will say, I completely agree with you on this aspect. I really feel like the way you destroy a country is from within and whoever oh, yeah. is guiding this, whether it be the deep state, as people like to say uh, outside international influences, they're doing a damn good job of it so far mm-hmm. uh, because you really see the deterioration of America from within Oh, yeah. All you gotta do, all you gotta do is look around, guys, and take the blinders off because it's happening right in front of our eyes. And I did. Now I don't like making yep. things political by all means, but wake the fuck up! You gotta see it. It's happening right now. Not, Whether you're a Democrat, Republican, whatever your belief is, you have to understand that they're definitely trying to divide everybody. Yeah, it's not. It has nothing to do with politics. This has to do with being like humans and living together, like finding yeah. common ground and working to build a better society for future generations it has nothing to do with you know left right whatever it's we 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 need to vote for people based on their character their morality and the platform that they stand on and what they're going to do for the country and it needs to be a unified approach because the problem is right now is that every four years it seems like we reset and we work in opposite directions and instead of moving forward, we're just keep building things up and tearing them down. And a lot of money gets wasted in the middle, like a lot of right, money, a lot of right taxpayer on, dollars. Man. You know, and it has. It's like the last administration tries to out to strip what the previous administration did, as opposed to having a future vision for the country that we can all agree on. Like, say, hey, this is where we want to be in thirty years. Can we all agree on this? Yes, we can. Okay, everybody's platform needs to be some derivative of this. Like, there is parts that might be near and dear to everybody's hearts. But I think that's where not going political, but that I think that's where Roe versus Wade was a mistake by passing in the first place, because I think it needs to be on the state level. I've I've always thought that I really do. And the reason I say that is because it's the closest to the individuals. Like the further you move up, the bigger the ideas have to be. Does that make sense? So Mm -hmm. if you're in, I don't know, Oklahoma, and you don't want abortion as a mass majority of Oklahomians, you should be able to vote that in. And then if you're New York and you think abortion should be okay, vote it in. And then if you're in Oklahoma and you think like you're New York, move to New York. (laughs) Uh, You know, I I can't disagree with you because it's like, Listen, the states were formed to govern yeah. themselves. Right. The federal government was only there to protect us as a country. I mean, I, I mean it's yeah. got and what they've done over the last century is uh-huh. slowly but surely stripped more rights away from the states and made yes. it federal, which was totally not the what it was intended to be. Yeah. From the formation of the federal government and the states having their own power to dictate right. what they do amongst their citizens in their state. I agree yep. with you there. I think this is a good time to like kind of take an exit. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Now, there's another movie I wanted to mention real quick. Guys, check it out over the weekend. It's new on Netflix. It's called Find Me Falling. It's a great romantic comedy if you're looking for something to watch with your significant other or if you're just lonely and want to watch something that must make you feel even worse. <laughs> make you cry and go, I suck at life. Yeah. If you're alone, sorry. Just pull out the jurgens and watch something else. I don't know. Yeah. That being said, guys – Great one, Mike. With that being said, head over to the dailybm.com where you can follow us on all our socials. Even if you're alone, you can still look at it. And then um, also, don't forget to head over to masondangerbeardco.com where you can get 20% off just simply by using the promo code dailybm. Hopefully, if you start smelling good, looking good, your beard's looking good, you won't be alone. You'll be able to watch us with you know whatever partner you have. Mike, you got anything you want to say before we get out of here? Hey, everybody, have a great conclusion to your week. Remember, stay tuned for Monday's episode. It's a running riot. (laughs) And with that, guys, we'll catch you on the flip side.
Have a good one. Deuces. <laughs>